The Meghalaya Cabinet today gave its approval to the Meghalaya Tourism Policy 2023, Meghalaya State Organic and Farming Policy 2023, Drug Reduction Elimination Action Mission Dream, the Meghalaya Advertising Policy and the Meghalaya Day Awards 2023. So, um, so today in the Cabinet meeting, uh, we had 13... Uh, sorry... 11, 11, 11 agendas were taken up in the cabinet meeting today and uh, the f one was uh, the tourism policy of 2023 uh, which was passed today in the cabinet uh, as you're aware the last tourism policy was uh, made in 2011 and since then uh, since then the tourism uh, industry and the sector has changed a lot and hence uh, we felt the need to improve it and adapt it to the current situation. Uh, this is a, a very, very detailed uh, pro uh, tourism policy where a lot of consultation has been done by uh, the department and we have come out with this. And uh, we have also placed this in public domain already. So I'm sure most of you have seen it and have gone through it. The tourism policy that we've created, uh, the idea is really to um, give a proper shape and structure to the overall tourism sector, keeping in mind the current situation that is there in the uh, in the overall sector. Now, what we see is that uh, um, you know things are happening in tourism. A lot of things are happening, but then uh, you know this not happening in a systematic and structured uh, manner. And uh, the policy is basically meant to give a complete shape uh, to the entire process in which uh, we want the tourism sector to grow. And uh, therefore, uh, you know, we have realized that uh, we need to look at aspects of, uh, say, for example, sustainability. You know, we are seeing that uh, in many parts of the world where we want uh, sustainable tourism to be there, there, is a, there are certain guidelines as to how, uh, you know, people can uh, visit or should visit certain locations. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, in, a, uh, in, a, in the Living Root Bridge, uh, is it good to have uh, 1,000 people standing on the uh, on the bridge every day, uh, or should it be controlled in some manner? So therefore, the policy will then define and look into these aspects on how to ensure that the sustainability of uh, these kind of aspects. Uh, what I told you is just one part of it, but I'm just giving an example. There's going to be many, many aspects to it. So how do we make it sustainable and how do we make it uh, a responsible tourism? <coughs> Uh, how do we ensure that uh, employment generation uh, and entrepreneurship is achieved? How do we ensure that the local people are involved in the entire process? How do community participate in this uh, aspect? How will the use of technology be to ensure that uh, we're able to promote uh, tourism in the best manner? And uh, also how the different departments will work together to ensure that at the end we are able to really <coughs> synergize between the different departments and get the maximum output when it comes to uh, the tourism sector in terms of livelihood and in terms of uh, sustainability and all the other aspects that I have mentioned. Uh, so this is what uh, this uh, basic tourism policy looks into. And of course, to achieve these ideas and these goals that we have, certain areas will have to be focused on. So for example, we need to focus on creating the right infrastructure in, uh, in many areas. So that means rooms, that means roads, that means public facilities and utilities. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, we need to also ensure that uh, we're able to create better circuits and um, we're able to improve the overall capacity of the, uh, of the people who are involved in the tourism sector. Say, for example, uh, you know, the drivers who are driving the taxis or the, uh, the guides who are, uh, you know, are guiding the, the tourist. Uh, so, uh, you know, shouldn't we have a proper training program for them? Uh, should we have a proper mechanism in which they are certified maybe and how they should be interacting with the tourist. So these capacity building aspects need to be looked at. Uh, we also need to see how we'll promote tourism as a whole, uh, what kind of programs to have, how to do the marketing and branding, uh, how to see that uh, we'll be looking at the uh, safety of tourists, how to ensure that tourists are safe when they come here, how community can participate in this whole thing. So all these aspects are there. For example, we we also don't have certifications, we don't have standards. So for example, a particular, say, a homestay, you know, if it's certified by, say, the government of Meghalaya or by the tourism sector, uh, the tourism um, directorate, 
uh, it will ensure that it builds up the confidence among the, the tourists also to, to stay in those locations. So these kind of aspects of branding, certification and regulations, these are all areas uh, and the areas I mentioned before also, uh, these, are, these are the things that will be covered in this tourism uh, in, in policy. And as I said, the idea is to really give it a proper shape and ensure that uh, we structure the entire uh, sector in the process in which we move forward. So basically the first part I mentioned, the sustainability. So in sustainability itself, apart from uh, looking at uh, you know, the flow of tourists in a location and how much can that ecosystem uh, actually sustain uh, in the long run with the flow of tourists, uh, aspects of waste management are also part of this. And within the waste management aspect, uh, these policies to ensure that uh, uh, strict measures are taken uh, for littering and uh, how to involve the local community into the entire process. So all of these are part of the policy. See, FDI is something that is uh, that is in general happening. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, we are, uh, uh, I didn't mention all the points because it would have taken a lot of time, but the private sector participation is also uh, very much a part of this entire uh, uh, policy. And uh, the FDI is, a, is, is just a general thing, which in any case is also happening without it being uh, specifically mentioned. But uh, just to give you a sense, uh, we are specifically mentioning about how the private sector participate, not just FDI, but the private sector, how they will play a role. For example, how we'll get uh, uh, professionals to get into the system, to train our people or different services that uh, the private sectors can provide. So all of these aspects obviously will be looked into. The tourism sector has to be have, has to have the involvement of the private sector. Tourism sector cannot be run by the government. And uh, you know the idea of uh, us bringing this policy is to ensure that we're able to create livelihood. And uh, in order to create the livelihood without the people in the private sector being involved, it won't happen. So definitely, uh, government, uh, we've maintained, should not be in the business of running uh, different uh, programs. We should be providing and we should be uh, only uh, uh, facilitating. facilitating the entire process and the rest of the thing should be done by the private sector. Now, obviously, our target is to increase the overall, uh, you know, the, the um, contribution of the tourism sector into the GDP. Uh, it is, of course, uh, I don't have the exact numbers right now with me, but it is below 10% uh, in terms of the contribution to, this, uh, to, the, to the entire GDP, uh, state GSDP. Uh, so therefore, we are looking at uh, more contributions. So obviously, if you look at the uh, points that I have mentioned to you, so when we'll have more uh, uh, rooms coming up, when we'll have more uh, uh, overall, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the guides coming up or taxis coming up. So obviously, all of this and flow of tourists coming in, different uh, activities happening, all this will lead to the contribution and the revenue of the. Uh, of the public as well as the government going up and we obviously expect to see uh, having a huge impact on the overall uh, GSDP of the state. So numbers of course we don't have numbers because these are things which are not simple to calculate it's very complicated uh, but definitely the whole idea of having the structure and this policy is to ensure that uh, the contribution of the sector is uh, much more than what it is today. Second was the Meghalaya state organic and natural farming policy. The, again, the idea was that uh, though there is a, a, you know, a effort towards uh, going to, to organic farming, but uh, a proper structured system policy, uh, certification agencies, different kind of uh, you know, programs, policies to be made uh, and done and actions to be taken were not really uh, properly uh, organized and properly put into a policy. So therefore, uh, this particular policy will give a complete structure to how we would move forward in terms of our organic uh, mission and in terms of uh, organic farming in the state. One has to understand that uh, we have to balance things out. Uh, it's not as simple as saying that, uh, you know, today we are uh, uh, using fertilizers and uh, tomorrow we just stop it and we're going to shift to organic, uh, organic uh, farming in one go. Uh, everything has to be in a transition format and therefore uh, the livelihood of people and uh, especially in the vegetable growing section uh, we have seen that uh, you know uh, chemical fertilizers are still being used and uh, it is required in some areas and it is taking time for 
the organic fertilizers uh, to really have that kind of impact. So yes, if you are saying that it's going to be black and white and we're going to completely shift to organic tomorrow, that's not going to happen. It takes time. It's a process. We need to continue to ensure that the people are taken on board. We need to ensure that people are uh, given the options and given the alternative to move forward. And that's what this organic mission is, uh, you know, I don't organic mission, but the policy, I'm sorry. The policy is what it intends to do, is to shift towards this. And slowly and steadily, we will see that most of the, number one, the areas which are not using chemical fertilizers that much, at least they will be then getting incentives or structures or systems to move into organic farming and get the support that they want to do. Then, of course, there are areas which are using them. Then we will work towards how we'll see that we will slowly shift them from, say, chemical fertilizers to, say, organic fertilizers. But as I said, uh, for us to do that, we also have to keep in mind that uh, there are people who depend on this uh, chemical fertilizers. There are uh, vegetables that uh, you know, need this. And uh, hence, uh, for us to completely cut it off and say we will not do it from tomorrow uh, would not be just and would uh, require us to really consider the livelihood of the people. And that's why it will, it's a process. Third was the printing of advertisement policy. Yeah, sorry. Adopting of the advertisement policy, the Meghalaya advertisement policy 2023. Um, this, um, the advertisement policy is also, um, you know, spelling out um, uh, the constitution of a state level impanelment, impanelment committee consisting of members from various departments, uh, which will <coughs> also include representatives from AIR, that's all India Radio, from DDK. <clears throat> representatives from the districts, that is the deputy commissioners, uh, the DIPR, and also the PIP. The terms of uh, reference for the impanelment committee, um, which is also being spelled out in this advertisement policy, would be to examine, scrutinize, and then accord approval for applications referred by the DIPR. Uh, then um, <clears throat> we have also spelled out the uh, conditions. Uh, for eligibility for print, electronic, and uh, on digital media. Um, we've also spelled out the classification and specifications of advertisements uh, because, um, you know, uh, advertisements have uh, specifics these days in terms of the banner sizes, in terms of uh, many, many, uh, you know, uh, the ways that, um, you know, uh, advertisements are given out, the various categories. Uh, we have also um, laid out general guidelines for release of advertisement and we want to f uh, the advertisement policy focuses on equitable distribution of advertisements. Um, we've also <coughs> spelled out in this uh, policy that there will be an advertisement committee which will consist of officials of the finance, law, um, of course the directorate of uh, advertising and visual publicity, government of India, that is the ABP and also the president or the secretary of MEPA as representatives, apart from the DIPR officials. <clears throat> uh, so these are basically the salient features of the advertisement policy. Fourth was the nominations for or approval for the Meghalaya Day Award 2023. And uh, I would like to just read out the names of the winners or the people who have been uh, who have been awarded uh, for the Meghalaya uh, Day Award. So the Uturot Singh Award uh, will be, which is for art and literature. Uh, the person who's been awarded is uh, Srimati Sweetimon Rinja. Uh, second for the Pathogan N. Sangma Award for Social Services. The awardee is, uh, person who's getting the award is Dr. Jennifer uh, Basai Myth. The third, which is the U Kyong Nangba Award for Sports and Games, uh, the award is being given to Sri Klingson D. Marak. So these are the three awardees, uh, and um, these awards, as you are aware, will be given out on Republic Day. Fifth was the Drug Reduction, Elimination and Action Mission, which we are calling DREAM. The Drug Reduction and Elimination and Action Mission, which is a dream mission, uh, which is again um, a goal and uh, a target by the 
government to ensure that uh, this particular aspect of substance abuse is taken up in a much more structured manner and uh, in a mission mode manner. And hence, uh, this will be uh, worked by uh, you know, taking all different departments into confidence and uh, different aspects of, uh, of rehabilitation centers, of giving counseling, uh, along with uh, working with the police department on how to ensure that the inflow is contained and uh, all other aspects that are uh, to do with substance abuse have been worked out in detail in this mission mode uh, program and the objective of course is to make uh, Megalite drug free.